let's take a peek inside the blue level of the reading intervention. As with all of my reading interventions, you'll notice that on the left-hand side of the page, you'll find a passage which is very repetitive. Every day, you're going to start on the left-hand side with a passage, and then on the right-hand side, then you'll bring in some of those reading skills, different activities that engage and make learning interactive. So I wanna first point out that day one and day two have the exact same passage. The same is true for day three and day four. And that was done very intentionally. Um, with lower levels of the reading series where the passages are short, it is totally possible to get multiple readings in in one day. However, I kind of felt like to ask students to read this much three times is too much. So spreading it over reading it one or two times on day one, one or two times on day three, I think is a little more realistic. It still gets in that repeated reading, which we know is a research-based strategy, helps them improve comprehension, um, is a little more realistic for them in my mind. So day one, we're doing a lot of surface level um, questions, just basic recall, where are your tonsils located? What important job do they have? Which, if they have read the passage, should be very easy for them to answer. So with this, I really have two focuses or two things that I want to target. So I like to use highlighters. And so we have pink, orange, blue, and green questions. And so what we do as we're going through this is we're going to say, where are your tonsils located? Well, with our pink highlighter, we're going to come over here and we're going to find where that is and highlight it. Then with our pencil, we're going to come back and we're going to work on restating the question. Your tonsils are located in the back of your throat where they've highlighted. And so they're really practicing that skill of restating and then what answer did the text tell me? Since most of these are basic recall questions, you're not asking them to draw conclusions. You're not asking them to take it to a deeper level. We're really just answering questions with the text that or with the answers that the text gave to us. The same is true with orange, blue, and green. Again, these are a lot of just basic recall questions. Down at the bottom then, we'll be word nerds and we'll start to um, talk about things like prefixes and suffixes or multiple meaning words or some of those other vocabulary skills that we need like finding context clues. So this word is contagious. This is usually common in kids ages five to 15 and are very contagious. The viruses and bacteria are easily passed when you sneeze or cough around others. What other words here help us know what contagious means? And so with that, we might circle or highlight easily passed. Um, when you are around others, it's common, just other things that are there that help us know what that word means. And then taking the time to talk about, sometimes we may not know what big words like this mean, but the text might help us out a little bit. On day two, then we take it a little bit deeper. And this is where a lot of the uh, more standardized testing practice comes in. So we always have a reading skill or reading strategy up here at the top of day two. Um, we might be asking students to ask questions, talk about background knowledge, find main idea, find details, compare and contrast, draw conclusions, various things in this box that'll change. This part, however, will not. So number one, what is the main idea of this passage? Again, this could change. Maybe it's asking them to draw a conclusion. And then number two will never change. Which statements from the text support your answer to number one? So whatever you chose here, maybe there are two sentences that support the, the answer that you gave. Maybe there are three, maybe there's only one. Um, this is the part that really tricks some of our kids when it comes time to test. And then we talk about a vocabulary word where we look up the definition, synonyms, antonyms, and ask students to draw a picture, which my kids always love. On day three, then, we're going to finally have a second passage. So we're going to introduce a new passage where, again, we'll read it one or two times, depending on what time allows. And then, again, we'll talk about some type of reading skill or reading strategy. Again, this rotates depending on the passage and depending on kind of what that passage lends itself to. Are we talking about main idea or are we talking about visualization? That's going to vary. 
Then this is, um, for me, a very big and important thing to have um, is an open-ended question where students have to answer it and cite evidence from the text. So should doctors remove tonsils for kids who have had repeated infections? Well, after they've read for three days now about tonsils, they might have some idea as to, yes, I think doctors should remove it, or no, I do not think they should remove tonsils, and then um, give their support. They can use text from here to prove that. We can talk about text, or, you know, cite from the previous day, whatever they need to support their answer that they have chosen. At the bottom, we talk a little bit about text structure. How was this organized? And then how do you know? This also kind of rotates. Sometimes it might ask for clue words or what did the author say? Um, but basically getting students to identify, okay, well, they were comparing and contrasting here and I know that because, and explaining how they know that. On day four, again, we'll read this one or two times depending on what time allows. And then we'll start working on using a T-chart to compare various things. With this, I do want to point out that if it, they are nonfiction passages, then I will put different categories in which you could sort or talk about the information that was provided. However, if they are fictional passages, I use the same four things every single time. We're going to talk about the setting. We're going to talk about the characters, the problem, the theme, those types of things every single time. Then down at the bottom, we have some sentences. And this is always something that tricks my kids. And I don't, maybe I am the only one, but myself as well when we take tests. It's like, oh, well, I find a problem with every single one of them. And I think they're all wrong, but I know one of them's right. Which one is there? And so I overanalyze. And so then we start, you know, asking students, which of these is written correctly? And again, this will stay the same. It'll just be the sentences that are stolen from the passage. Now for day five, you're going to have two different options. Included in the booklet is a writing prompt. So they've just read about tonsils and tonsillitis all week long. And so now we're gonna ask them to create a narrative story that tells about a child who has tonsillitis. Be sure to use information for both passages. And so they'll have some room to brainstorm and to write some ideas, draw graphic organizers, whatever they need here, which again, I feel should be explicitly taught because a lot of kids get to a planning page on testing or they're given a blank piece of paper to plan and they don't have a clue what they should write. And so we talk about what to write here and then they have several pages to actually write. If you don't have time for a writing prompt or maybe every other week or every few weeks you do a writing prompt, there is a test that is just front and back, print it and go. That way you can um, give an assessment, give kind of an end of week, or maybe you wanna use both, that's up to you. Now, tonsils might seem like a really random topic, and I'll be honest, a lot of times the topics do seem random, unless you're also using the spelling words um, that I have also in my TPT store. And so with this, the multisyllabic words, this whole first five weeks, we're just working on closed syllables, um, like CBC syllables, which tonsils, or the word tonsil would be. And so you'll often see that whatever these words are inspires then kind of what that story is going to be about. Um, so catfish, there's a great story on catfish coming up, rabbits, different things that just these words then guide us into, oh, well, let's talk about tonsils this week, or let's talk about the sunset, or, or whatever those words are. And so these are a great complement. They don't have to be used with it, but that's a lot